My question is, for things such as homosexuality, which people who argue against evolution ceaselessly will insist, there appears to be no linear Darwinian reason to possess this trait. Now that's a very common question. It's one of the commonest questions I get asked. How can it be that homosexuality gets passed on from generation to generation? Why doesn't it just disappear? Why doesn't natural selection remove it? Well, the first thing to say is that it's only a problem if it's a genetically inherited thing. And you need evidence for that. And the evidence for that comes from twin studies. If you take monozygotic twins, identical twins, and you find that for anything, it doesn't have to be homosexuality, for height or weight or musical ability, anything you like, and you find that identical twins, monozygotic twins, are more like each other than non-identical twins, significantly more like each other, then that suggests that the characteristic concerned is heritable. Heritable means that there is a genetic component to the variance in the population with respect to the character concerned. In the case of height, in the case of musical ability and so on, you find that to a greater or lesser extent there is a genetic component. There is heritability. And in the case of homosexuality, yes, there is too. If you know the sexual orientation of one twin, then you're better able to predict the sexual orientation of the other twin if they're monozygotic than if they're dizygotic. So there is heritability, which means we do have a Darwinian problem. We do have to ask the question, why is it that male homosexuality has survived down the generations, given that you might think natural selection would get rid of it? There are various things that have been suggested. Uh, there's, for example, the, uh, the worker bee hypothesis that uh, males can look after their nephews and nieces, for example, uh, rather than look after their own children. And uh, so not being sexually active yourself, not being heterosexually active yourself, could uh, n not necessarily be selected against in natural selection because of that. A related idea, which is a bit fanciful perhaps, is that in our wild ancestors there might have been a time when dominant males who had harems went off hunting and left the women and children in charge of males that they could trust. And you could say, I suppose, that an ostentatiously homosexual male would be trustworthy to a dominant harem-holding male. But of course, uh, many homosexual males are actually bisexual to a greater or lesser extent. And so this might have produced, this might have provided a, an alternative way for males to get access to females, as it were, uh, pretend to be not interested in females, not deliberately pretend, I'm not talking about that. So that's another hypothesis, but I'm not very keen on either of those two theories. I prefer to say something rather more nuanced, which is that when we talk about a gene for anything, whether it's homosexuality or anything else, we don't necessarily mean that the gene inevitably has that effect. A gene only has the effect that it does in the right environment. So it could be that a gene that has the effect of causing a male to be homosexual in the present environment, in our present technological environment, civilized environment, would not have had that effect in a different environment. A possible example, and this only is for example, there's no, absolutely no evidence for it, a possible example would be what if bottle feeding as it were, brings the gene out, brings out the effect of that, of that gene. What if a breastfed boy who has this gene is heterosexual, but a bottle-fed boy who has this gene is homosexual? Well, in the days before bottles were invented, that gene would not have expressed itself as homosexuality. Uh, so now what we may be looking at is a different expression of the same gene. Now I'm not wedded to that particular idea at all. I find it a good example to get across the point that the effect of a gene is not inevitably tied to it but depends upon the environment in which the individual is brought up.